it's almost nine o'clock and I am fucking exhausted. Today was my birthday. I turned 41 years old today. Fucking hell. I'm <laughs> just kind of like, whoa. I, I was like, I had a shocker at turning 40 and I'm turning 41. Just like, like, wow. I just, I feel, I don't know how I feel. I feel really like, oh, I don't feel old, but I know number wise I'm old. And so it kind of throws me because I'm like, fuck. 41 is pretty up there, but I just, I just still don't feel it. And I'm just wondering if it's ever going to hit me, if I'm ever going to just look in the mirror and be like, fuck, I'm old because so far it hasn't happened. Um, I had a very full day out today. I didn't actually get to talk to Josh very much because he was at work. And then when he got off of work, I was out. Um, I woke up and I was in the middle of getting dressed and I was like, fuck, I was going to do a get ready with me. So I stopped what I was doing um, partially dressed. I didn't have my top on yet. I just had a skirt on. I hadn't even zipped up the skirt yet. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to wear fully, but, uh, I had most of my outfit kind of sorted. So I couldn't do a full get ready with me, which is fine because the video itself is kind of long, but I did a partial, partial get ready with me, I guess. Um, not really. Sorry. I didn't do, I didn't do a get ready with me. I did a, a video in the morning when I woke up didn't have my shirt on yet. Wasn't trying to be a dirty slut. I just was really tired. I'd gotten up, brushed my teeth, and that's it. I didn't have any makeup on. I was like, I'm so fucking exhausted. I've got to get up and do this. Just started my period. I'm not happy. And then I did a video showing my outfit. And then I went and I picked up Logan. We went to the mall. He spoiled me. Then I came back here. Um, dropped off some stuff. Then I went to the mall, I got a ride, and I went to the mall with my other ex, Ryan, and I couldn't video because he doesn't like to be videoed, but I did, we did go to Denny's afterwards, and I videoed what he got me, and then I came back here where I'm staying, and I put together a video of everything, like the day, getting ready, blah, blah, blah. And that took a while because I had to cut chunks out of th that weren't necessary because I'm walking around the mall and I'm just like filming random bullshit. And so I didn't want to make it. It was originally about an hour long and I cut it down to 20 minutes. So it was a lot of editing to do. Um, but that's not the focus of this video. I will have my birthday video up when everything's sorted and everything's put together, maybe in a couple of days. Um, this video is to talk about the video that was released accidentally. I'm so pissed off because as you guys would have seen, I, I got the ticket. Now I had originally scheduled it to come out on my birthday. I thought, you know, it'll be cool, a cool thing and a cool distraction while I'm getting my birthday video. Cause I knew I'd, I'd at least do something even, I didn't expect gifts, but I got gifts. Like I feel so fortunate and so lucky that I have so many people that care about me. Um, I didn't expect anything. I thought I'd go out and do something here and there, maybe. So while I knew I was getting whatever birthday video together, I wanted another video out there to kind of to tide everybody over because my videos are kind of few and far in between while I'm, you know, waiting to move and stuff. And then I thought, you know, I kind of want to, I kind of want to surprise everybody. So I unscheduled it. And what I was going to do was just, you know, keep going. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to get a ticket soon. I'm going to get a ticket soon, whatever, not give anything away and then pop up. Bam. Guess what? I'm here with Josh and everybody will be like, holy shit. What the fuck did you do? You know, that's what I wanted to do. So I don't know why, even though I unscheduled it, it's still posted fucking YouTube, but it did. So since it did, I'm going to take this opportunity to clear up a couple of things. One, the fact that I was still asking for help for the last $300 when I had the ticket. Um, if you notice in the video, I said I borrowed money. I borrowed some money for the ticket because there was only a limited amount of seats at the price I got it at. And I didn't have the money. Borrowed it which means I needed to pay it back. I'm now all paid off. I have paid it. What I owed the people that lent me the money was the last like $300. So that has now been taken care of. I wasn't like, here's all the ticket money. I've got the ticket asking for handouts and then spending it. That's, 
it's not something I would do. Um, it was definitely for the ticket. At first it was for the ticket itself. And I got, I got a lot of private help. People didn't want to use the app. So I, I tried to delete the fundraiser. People didn't, they don't really like using fundraisers. They contact me privately. They like to feel, I guess, that it all goes to me. So I did get quite a bit of help, particularly from one person. One person helped me above and beyond. Then there was my own saving, my own selling stuff. Logan helped me and help from, from very various people online. So all of us together came up with the money for the ticket. Um, now what I'm working on is my excess baggage because what I was gonna do was buy excess baggage for just over $100 when I bought the ticket. Um, well, it says you, you put in your, your booking number and you can buy it, but I can't do that because my last flight is a different airline, not Qantas. And so therefore, I have to buy it at the airport, which is like almost double the price. So it's about $200. The reason I want to take so many bags with me is because um, the price to bring the rest of my stuff over is about seven, 8,000 US dollars. And while I've cleared that with Josh, I've asked him, I've, I've asked him if he wants me to get rid of more stuff. What does he want me to do? I don't want to be a burden to him. I don't want to expect... For him to have to pay for my shit which is why also I've denied help from him thus far I don't want him to feel I don't want to be a burden to him like I feel like I was to Logan um, so he has said no that's fine don't get rid of any more of your stuff he will take care of it so that's what it is so that might take about a year or so we're estimating about a year so if that takes a year I'm stuck living a year out of these few suitcases because again I don't want to go over there with nothing and have him feel responsible for me and have to buy me new clothes new makeup new everything so I'm getting what I can while I'm here to take over there so I can be self-sufficient trying to get you know enough money so that I can take my own stuff over there and uh, I don't see anything wrong with that personally I'm not going over there to use this guy and to live off of him you know, he knows what he's getting into. I know what I'm getting into. This is between him and me. If he has an issue with me not working or whatever, he would say so. He actually doesn't want me to work because where he is working, he makes enough money. He is, he is, prefers me to be like a housewife, be at home, have dinner ready for him when he comes home because he's going to be working such long hours. We don't need to be on different schedules doing all this and we won't need the money. So if we don't need the money, there's no need for me to go out and for us to be living two separate lives. Again, that's between he and I, and I talk about it all the time that I am so fucking worried about being a burden to him because I do not want to go over there and just sit and live off of somebody else. I don't want to do that. But he said, if I really, really want to work there, work at home jobs, um, data entry and things like that, I can possibly do so. Maybe I'll look into something like that if I start to feel like I'm a burden, but Again, that's between me and him. Um, as far as buying the ticket without him knowing about it, we had already discussed how soon in the future um, he would be ready for me. And I had already asked him about the date that we chose. Would Could I look for something around this date or would that be too soon? Will you be ready? Do you think you'll be ready? He said, I should be ready it shouldn't be a problem. So he knew I was looking at getting a ticket. He just didn't know that I was going to click buy on a ticket because he knew I didn't have the money. That's it. I didn't do anything behind his back or catch him off guard or assume that he'd be ready for me and put him in this position where he could not have me. He is moving out of this house. He's actually say 98% certain we actually already have a place. He's got a hotel booked for the meantime. Um, just as a backup, but then he found this man who was renting two bedroom, two bathroom, nice place. And the guy is just cleaning it up. And after it's cleaned up, it's ours. So, you know, we're set. We've got our lives set. We've got everything ready. He's got a good job. He just needs, he needs another vehicle. Big whoop. That's going to be easy enough. Um, once the you know, living situation is sorted where he has a vehicle, he just would like another vehicle. He would like his, he's using a vehicle right now because he had engine problems of his own. So he's going to look for a replacement vehicle so that he can have his own vehicle. But 
that doesn't affect me living there or moving there. Um, I did sit on the information for about three weeks, so now there's only 19 days left. Um, it might look like I have a big mouth and I blab about every single thing in my life, but I actually don't. That's just a, a part of me I've made it look like, like I've got a big mouth and I can't say anything. And only ignorant trolls would think that I spill every single secret that comes into my life. But no, I sit on a lot of information. There is a lot in my life you don't know about. And there's a lot of misinformation that I put out there for the trolls. Um, if they want to watch me so vigilantly, vigil vigilantly I've got to give them something to watch. Uh, so I, I like to mislead them. In certain ways I like to fuck with them in other ways um, and I put out information here and there what I put out is very selective I don't just spill everything I spill some things and I keep them guessing for the rest of it like are me and Logan Logan divorced or are we still married were we ever married in the first place legally um, what's my name <laughs> Uh, why am I trying to, why am I talking about social security? Why am I not wearing Logan's ring? Um, I change rings off and on. I wear, that wasn't actually my wedding ring. Logan has my wedding ring. He's had it. I have his wedding ring here and I have Josh's ring here. It's on a different finger because I just got this tattoo touched up and I don't want to wear a ring on it. Uh, don't look so deeply into shit. God, people are so fucking stupid. Yes, I did go to, go to the site. That's how I know this stuff. Um, they say I lurk. I don't lurk. I've got better things to do with my time than to lurk on a hate site about me. What happened was when this video about the ticket went, went out, I was like, fuck, I don't want it out there. I want them to think I'm spending money and I'm not going over there. I want to surprise everybody. I want my supporters to be surprised and I want my haters to be like, fuck, I was wrong. You know, something like that. I, I just like to shake it up a little bit. And when I saw that the video went up without my knowledge, I rushed to the site to see if they had caught it or not, or if I could take the video down. They caught it. They were all over that shit. I didn't read everything, but I did skim through quite a bit to see they're still shit talking. They went so far as to look at the color and the cut of his shirt in that video and Google to see what uniform it is to see where he works. How fucking extreme is that? How ridiculous is it to stalk somebody's life to that extent? They have to know where he works. Come on. I mean, do you guys not have a life? Like, seriously, do you not have a life? Because that takes work. And if you have a life or family or job, you shouldn't have that amount of time to focus on knowing where he lives, get screenshots of his house, find out who owns the house, find out the, you know, everything you can about the town to see how well I'll adjust to living in a small town. Um, by the way, that's not the town we're going to be living in. Just, just so you know, finding out where he works, judging on the kind of vehicle he was in, in that snippet of video and the kind of outfit he was wearing. Why does it matter where he works? Why does it matter where he lives? Why does it matter how he acts, how I act, my name, my marriage status? If he and I get married, who he lives with or who he doesn't live with, how long we've known each other, if I'm going over there, if I'm not, why does any of that matter to any of you? Um, you think he's ugly? You're not the one dating him. You think I'm ugly? You're not the one dating me. You think that I'm fat and disgusting? You're not the one fucking me or who's going to be fucking me. You think that he, him and his whole family are hillbillies or whatever. You know what? I bet they have a lot more family ties, a bigger heart, and actually a bigger brain than any of you because you guys, you stick on the same topic constantly. You hate on him and you pick on him because you cannot make a victim out of him. And we all know this is true. Um, but don't worry, because when I get over there, I'm going to have so much content like you guys, the haters. I'm talking, this is, this, this little chunk is all to my haters. Um, you guys are going to have so much content, so much. It's going to keep you busy for fucking ages. Don't worry. I won't forget you. Um, 
the whole reason that I am still online doing this stuff is because I've got people watching everything I do. You want to act like I'm so bad. I know I'm not a bad person and I know that I have a right to my life. And if you don't like my life, you don't like who I'm with, you don't like who I was with, then don't watch. It's as simple as that. My life is my life and it's going to continue whether you're watching it or not. And I'm trying, you know, in every way possible to fuck, to fuck with the haters because they're so fucking stupid. They don't see it coming. They just don't. They don't know when they're being played, which is what I find hilarious. They've got no clue when they are being played and they sit there and they'll debate over the dumbest, dumbest shit. And they'll stay on one topic. Like I could say something right now and 20 years in the future, they'll still be on it going over it and over it and over it, trying to figure out what the fuck I meant by it. And when I say specifically, lolcal and Kiwi Farms, I am fucking with you. I know what you're doing. I do and say things to fuck with you and to keep you watching my life because you watching my life makes me money and keeps me relevant. They sit there and they're like, what did she mean by that? <laughs> She's not fucking with us. We're fucking with her. Uh, uh, we're her captive audience and we've been watching her for, what was it, six years now and we ruined her marriage and we're laughing about it, but we can't understand that her, her husband loves her and he, of his own free will, wants to be around her and do stuff with her. So we're just going to pretend that he's an idiot that was brainwashed by her because we don't want him or her to be happy. We hate him, but we can't hate him. Because if we hate him, we can't make a victim out of him. So we're just going to pretend we like him so that he's a poor, stupid little boy who is just a victim of this big, fat, nasty, saggy, ugly pedophile. Why does she have fans? How could anybody care about her or like her? People do like me. People do care about me. And I know it just... Ugh. But you know what? They do. They do. And... I care about the ones that care about me. People send me shit all the time. People are there for me all the time. You guys are there for me all the time. You think you're not, but you are. You think, why does she keep saying she's relevant? She's not relevant. Why does she keep thinking that all we do is talk about her? No, we don't. You guys fucking go to fucking, just all you got to do, honestly, is type in Raven Sparks Joshua. Those three words, it'll show up the top thread. And you look at how much they talk about me. how much they stalk me, how much they twist every single thing I say and do, twist it and tear it into their own twisted version of reality, just have something to talk about, how they pretend they don't waste time on me and they only, we only just check on her here and there, like when I go to the bathroom or something, we've got lives. Uh, no, you don't. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I am your life. I've got almost 2 million views on my fucking YouTube and I only have just over 7,000 subscribers. That's from you guys. Stalkers. I am your life. And the sooner you admit it, the sooner we can just move along with this parasitic symbiotic relationship we have going on because I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. You're not going to stop what you're doing. You watch me. I put on a show for you and we're all happy in the end. You say you're not but you really are. I know I am. Um, this fucking video has already got almost a thousand views. It's probably by now. I'm actually going to check. Let's do a live check here. How fucking many views has this video gotten? It is up to 1,059 views and it only came out a few hours ago. So, um, you tell me that you're not watching my life and you're not stalking my life. I beg to fucking differ. I just don't understand why you can't admit it. You know, I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous to me, but it is, it is what keeps me going. And me and Josh together, we're going to make lots of videos. Now my, my true subscribers who aren't posing as fans and friends to get close to me, my real subscribers out there, love you guys a lot. I've got makeup on my hands. I really do. I really do appreciate everything that you guys do, everything you are. 
I appreciate all of you and I'm not trying to be snarky or bitchy to any of you guys, but surely you, if you've been around long enough, you'll know I've been stalked by the same group of people who are anonymous little pussies for six plus years of my life. And, uh, they're boom, <laughs> they're on my shit faster than any of my true longtime fans and friends, which is a little bit scary. Um, these are the kind of stalkers that would meet me in person and probably try to kill me and then steal my head and fuck it or something. But I'm going to go now. This this video has gotten a little bit out of hand. I just meant to do a quickie explaining the ticket situation thing. But in the end, what it boils down to is anything I do in my life, whether it be with my about, my, my son, Logan, my ex-husband, Josh, or anybody else, it doesn't actually involve anybody else except for me and the people that it involves. Everybody who interacts with me does so of their own free will. I don't force anybody to do anything with me, around me, for me, to me, anything. I have a lot of support. I have a lot of love. I have a lot of people who appreciate me and who understand me. I have a lot of people that stalk me, that hate me, that don't understand me and that pick apart everything I do. I, I've got a lot of the negative as well, but I do have a huge amount of positive people, positivity, and just good shit around me. And I can acknowledge that, I can understand that, just like I can understand the sick fascination for the people that hate me to keep watching and watching, waiting to see me fail. I'm not gonna fail. But even if I did fail, it's my life. And these are things and lessons I need to learn myself, a, a path only I can walk, and it doesn't involve you. So, so what if you don't like the choices I make? So what if you don't like the way I look, the way I choose to look or dress given my age, even though it's okay for other people older than me to look more over the top than I do, it's not okay for me because it's me, right? I don't think so. I'm going to do what I want to do because I want to do it and you're not going to stop me. And if you don't like it, all you can do is sit there passively and continue to watch as I continue to live. One day you might give up, but I highly doubt it. Meanwhile, I'm still living. And the things that you don't know about would give you shit to talk about for the next, at least fucking, at least the next 10 years because there's a lot you don't know and that you will never know that is between me and the people that are involved. Other than that, please keep watching you guys and I will be filming my airport, my goodbye, my plane trip, and my landing, of course, and then once I'm there. So there'll be stuff upcoming now that this cat's out of the bag. Thank you guys for all your support, good and bad, and I'll see you around.